America, again, because of the Second World, primarily, well, they're formerly Japanese islands that were captured during World War II, and then they weren't given back to Japan. Not that they should have been given back to Japan, but they're not really independent islands either. Right, right. So, now, and then, you know, and so, all right now we're talking about, um, you know, that, so this is my thinking, and I'm happy to answer this to anybody who would like to discuss this issue. To my way of thinking, the, if California were to become independent, Washington should become independent, Oregon should become independent, Hawaii should become independent, all the Pacific Islands should be given statehood, if you will, in a new federation. The idea that I was thinking is a very loose federation, one that, um, because of course, if we go simply by population, California is going to be dominant in any of any federation. Mm -hmm. So it should be one in which each uh, state or former territory should have, uh, you know, a, a, an equal voice. All but right, the, so the, the total federation should have very little power so that each each one can go its own way. Because um, we are, after all, talking about a, a bunch of islands and lands that are spread across, what, something like 5,000, 6,000, 8,000 miles? I don't know how far right. it is to, to the Marianas. All right, so let's boil it down to some concretes here, Hannah. Let's say that all these places that you want to see become independent, become independent. First, list them for us again, and then tell us uh, what what that aftermath looks like. What, sure. what benefits? Sure, yeah, that's, I'm really excited to talk about that. Yeah. So we got Washington and California and uh, and uh, and uh, California, Washington, California, Oregon, right, and Hawaii. Mm -hmm. You then have to include Alaska because just like California, just like Hawaii is very dependent on California. Um, all the trade to Alaska is coming from Seattle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you bring in Alaska. Then mm -hmm. you've got to think about. Colorado and New Mexico are two states that are. Um, Increasingly democratic and become an increase have increasingly growing populations and becoming increasingly Hispanic, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they have historically, well, New Mexico particularly is voting regularly blue all the time, and mm -hmm. then Colorado is becoming more and more a reliably democratic uh, state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then Nevada, because Nevada is also the same thing. You, you get the picture here, right? I'm yeah. looking at states that have growing populations, that have growing economies, right. that are getting you know very diverse populations and a lot more Hispanic people. So in now, them. what effect does all that uh, becoming independent have? Let me finish. Okay. So there goes Nevada, uh -huh. Utah, and yeah. after you throw in Utah, you got to throw in Arizona because mm -hmm. now Arizona would be completely cut off from the rest of the USA. It'd be bounded by a new federation and Mexico. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, by the way, oh, and one more, it's Idaho, because I happen to know Eastern Washington well enough to know that uh, people in Spokane and Walla Walla really depend on people in Idaho. They, they you know, Coeur d'Alene and uh, Moscow, for instance, are, are really important to those parts of Eastern Washington. So you just can't cut off Idaho from, from Washington. But um, now what would that be the upshot? Well, in population, um, California alone has 12% of the U.S. population. But if you included all those states I just listed, those the tens, actually tens, that include Ohio, mm -hmm. that's 22% of the population. So now you're talking about a very significant portion of the USA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, incidentally, if you threw in Texas in there, it goes to 30%. If you threw in the Atlantic states, mm -hmm. it's now two-thirds. And the Atlantic states are also becoming reliably democratic. Again, the same thing. Diverse populations. Basically, these are the parts of the USA that are rejecting what we will call Trumpism. This white supremacist, this last gasp attempt to preserve uh, the superiority of the white uh, race, I guess. I guess they'd, call, they'd like to call it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and suppressing minorities. And so, and of course, it's a very, um, you know, um, at 67%. Uh, in land area, uh, by the way, uh, in 
future one. And California is only 4% of the pop- of the land here in the United States. But if you threw in Alaska and California and the whole West track I mentioned, you go to 40%. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, you're talking about a big piece of territory um, that would be, um, you know, uh, maybe that's a dream, but... That wouldn't look very, that wouldn't, that's not, a, if you put this, I think we would say one thing. If you really did bring those 11 states together, you would no longer be talking about, people wouldn't be laughing anymore. Right, right. Because clearly, we'd be on our way to becoming a, a new superpower. Right. Now, what effect would all that have on the United States, uh, you know, the part of it that was left? Well, I can say that. What's left, frankly, I think what's left is um, that here maybe we should talk a little bit about, and this has been getting a little more press lately, Mm -hmm. um, is the fact that we're, if you're, you know, you at home are, are, are aware of the case, the reason people give for why California should become independent, Mm -hmm. people often talk about the fact that California has a huge population and only has two U.S. senators, right? Mm -hmm. But in fact, the real problem we have is that more and more people in the USA are concentrating themselves in fewer and fewer states. Mm -hmm. Currently, as we speak, Half the U.S. population, that's 160 million people, are in just nine states. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And by 2040, that's going to be just eight states. And the real problem is um, uh, that by 2040, which is, you know, less than, uh, you know, 20 years, I mean, what, 12 years from now, I'm sorry, I'm going bear my marriage myself, 22 years ago, but, but still within the foreseeable future. By 2040, you're going to have a situation in which half the U.S. Senate, roughly, could be elected by just 15% of the population of the United States. And that 15% is going to be concentrated in the economically, in, you know, in lands that are at economic hardship, that are white-dominated, well, let's just call that Trump land. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in fact, it may con- be sound controversial to people, but it was actually just uh, not long ago when I realized that Donald Trump is actually very intelligent for choosing to become a white racist candidate. Mm-hmm. Because under the U.S. Constitution, it's currently written, a white racist candidate is going to have a significant advantage over a progressive anti-racist candidate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And furthermore, uh, here's the next problem. People a lot of times talk about how, oh, Texas will become a democratic state, or Florida will become a democratic state, or both Texas and Florida become a democratic state, and they have huge populations, and that's true. But when some state, that state, say a state like Ohio, or Michigan, or Pennsylvania becomes reliably democratic, what's going to happen is even though those states have small populations, mm-hmm. they're, they still have... Um, they used to be you know, reliably Democratic. If they become reliably Republican, you're going to have the same situation we have now, which is a U.S. Senate that's dominated by Republicans, mm-hmm. or at least enough of them control it, even though the total population would become you know, increasingly slim. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, let's just you know, take the numbers. Um, Let's say the Democratic Party comes to dominate 20 states and the Republican Party dominates 30 states, even though the total population might be 85, 86 percent of the U.S. population might be in those 20 states. Well, guess exactly what that means, that we're going to be in no different situation than we are now, because the Republicans will be able to do anything they want, as we're seeing right now with putting Justice Kavanaugh on the U.S. Supreme Court. Right. Right. 
you know. And, of course, as I said, they're going to have to appeal to that white racist vote in the center of this country. And basically, I honestly do not see how a United States of America is going to continue. Now, maybe I can throw out a little piece of hope here for those who didn't, you know, because I will say that my feeling is if we have a strong, serious movement in California and other states for independence, then we can basically, because the answer is, of course, that power in the U.S. Senate is divided up by states, not mm -hmm. by population. Mm -hmm. And some states have, and as I said, the founding fathers, the founders simply never envisioned a country which would be so radically divided, both politically and by population. Mm -hmm. So we can say the solution I proposed is that senators could have votes based on their population. So, for instance, our Diane, you know, our, our senator might have like 60, 70, 66, or actually more than that, votes in the U.S. Senate, while the senator in Wyoming would have one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that would be fair. Right, right. Okay, that would avoid the situation we have where we have Justice Kavanaugh getting confirmed when he's clearly um, um, unfit, in, unfit, inappropriate, and frankly, I think he should be disbarred, much less he shouldn't even be practicing law. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so that would be it. Now, some people would say, well, that's just blackmail, and I would say, yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, those would be the terms we would offer. Mm -hmm. As I were lieutenant governor, if I were and if, if you and if Evan, if Marcus is governor, or if we had a governor who is an independent supporter, that's the term we'd offer: change mm -hmm. the U.S. Senate, and we'll stay. Right, right. If you don't, we're leaving. And by the way, the clock is ticking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you know, know, even even Amnesty International now uh, is calling for a halt on Kavanaugh's nomination. So, uh, you know, when when large organizations with the kind of reputation uh, of Amnesty International's is calling for a halt on that kind of nomination or a halt of that kind of activity, you know that's bad. Well, there's lots more, but yeah. I think maybe more important is the fact that Steve Schmidt, who is a um, anti-Trump Republican, Mm -hmm. But I mean, he was a, a you know he was the key person in the John McCain campaign, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and Steve Schmidt. He just declared today that uh, the, the Kavanaugh nomination hearings that were held today were such a disaster that a whole bunch of U.S. Senate seats have just gone up for grabs. But still, let's not forget um, the currently the U.S. Senate has a fifth. The Republicans have a fifty-one percent. A 51 vote majority. I think it's 50 50, and then the vice president uh, casts the deciding vote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they have a 51, and that's also, by the way, including Bernie Sanders and uh, and the weather. <laughs> Got me now. Who is it? Is it Patrick mm -hmm. Leahy? No, it's that guy from Maine. There's one independent U.S. senator besides Sen Senator Sanders. And the thing is that uh, right now, our White House is pretty much run by guys who are thinking to themselves, well, boys will be boys, and we've all done this, and, you know, it's nothing out of the ordinary. Yeah, and, but it's even worse than that. Because yeah. uh, there was a, a tweet out just now, just today, a little piece of video came out in which apparently some Donald Trump supporter was standing there, female, mm -hmm. was standing there, and said, um, you know, oh, oh it's... Um, it's okay. Women just have to expect to be, you know, attacked, basically. Right. Um, you know, and she said this in front of her own daughter. So um, they're, they're, they're uh, uh, but I mean, again, um, there's all kinds of things wrong with Kavanaugh. There's the yeah. fact that he lied to Congress in his previous hearings. Mm -hmm. Patrick Leahy, U.S. Senator from, Ken from Connecticut, is particularly incensed about that. Mm -hmm. There's the fact that some $200,000 in debts has just disappeared magically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there's the fact that he pretended, he said he never saw any evidence of sexual harassment by a, a judge he used to work for, even though that judge had to resign. 
for right. his sexual harassment. I mean, you know, I mean, there are so many reasons why Kavanaugh is, is clearly um, unfit. But the point I'm really making here is it's not.